these are both um, these are both uh, methods uh, in the field of nuclear medicine. And I hope I can give you an introduction because I think this is something that uh, comes a little bit short in the studies and maybe I can give you a, a wider insight. So yeah, we will talk today about uh, the basics of nuclear medicine, uh, the image generation, especially about scintigraphy and PET CT, and also uh, we will have some case reports to see uh, what you've learned, and maybe uh, you can guess what are the answers. So okay, nuclear medicine. Um, yeah, nuclear medicine uh, uses radioactive compounds. Um, these can be radio pharmaceuticals or uh, radio tracers. Uh, a tracer is an end atom that is switched with a, a radioactive isotopes, but uh, it's not changing the biochemical properties. So um, because of that, we can uh, we can target different organs with uh, um, substance and the radioactive isotope. Uh, will let it um, be visible in the uh, nuclear medicine in the, in the gamma camera. Um, yes, a nuclear medicine interrogate physiological and pathological processes at a molecular level. So we're talking about picomolar or no, uh, nanomolar um, levels. So this is a very small range of uh, particle. And uh, it can be also used for targeted uh, therapy, especially in oncology for radiation therapy. And uh, yeah, nuclear medicine, uh, medicine studies are clinically used to assess actually most organ system from bones to internal organs to the brain. Um, it's nowadays widely used as we will see later. So um, it is used for the evaluation of function or the metabolism. It's not used for the anatomical structure. And uh, the small radioactive compounds allow us to observe the picture of the um, disease without any disturbances of the process. And um, with these uh, generated data, we can easily access uh, and diagnose different uh, different pathologies. Um, yes, so it's very helpful to um, diagnose early uh, pathologies because usually the functional deficits, uh, deficits arise uh, before morphological and this early detection in early stages allow us to um, act fast and uh, have curative um, treatment over palliative treatment. Now we are coming to the image generation. Um, as uh, mentioned before, um, there are radioactive atoms in these uh, radio pharmaceuticals, and these atoms are unstable and they decay. So they produce uh, ionizing radiation. And uh, these high energy rays interact with a, a special light producing crystal that is located in the nuclear medic, uh, medicine camera. And this camera then creates an image that, is, um, that allows us to uh, diagnose the pathology. So there are uh, two rays used. Uh, it's, uh, uh, one is the gamma, ray, uh, gamma rays and the other are positron emission. So the gamma rays or gamma radiation is as we Hopefully all um, remember it's an electromagnetic radiation. It has no rest mass and no charge. It has a very high energy and this high energy photons uh, have a very short wavelength and a very high frequency. And they can uh, penetrate uh, nearly any matter and uh, travel thousands of feet and also can easily pass through a uh, human body. So the um, 
positive beta decay or positron decay. And uh, this is a little bit more, uh, more complicated. It's, uh, um, it's a protein rich nucleus that emits a positron. And a positron is a anti particle of an electron. So it has the same mass, but compared to an electron, it has a positive electric charge. And uh, yeah, it uh, reduces the nuclear charge by one unit. And uh, it's really uh, releasing a positron and also electron neutrino. And uh, this annihilation happens when a low energy positron collides with a low energy electron. So on this slide, we can see um, the gamma ray with a, a high frequency and with a very small uh, particle. And also the beta plus decay, we have first um, six protons and four neutrons. And afterwards, we will have five protons and five uh, neutrons, plus the um, neutral neutrino and the positron that are released. Well, this is the basic physical explanation how uh, the both arrays are working. So, um, now to the image generation. So uh, the radioactive atoms decay and they emit uh, rays and every ray has a specific energy. This energy is, uh, has kilo electron volts uh, or KVE as a unit. For example, uh, technetium 99M um, is a gamma ray emitter and its um, energy is 140 kilo electron volt and this uh, gamma camera is capturing uh, the, the, uh, the, the rays and if it detects this 140 kilo electron volt we know this is the technetium that we used um, as a tracer and this is how they identify the different um, energy uh, ranges and know which tracer to um, to visualize and to um, to create the image of. Yeah, some uh, radioisotopes can also give uh, several images and the camera is uh, able to distinguish between all those uh, isotopes and can also uh, identify a simultaneous uh, imaging of two or more a radio tracer. So it's actually quite helpful in diagnostic matters. So the uh, gamma camera. The gamma camera has four uh, main parts. First, there's the collimator. This is a sheet of lead with holes that is designed uh, to reduce the scatter. And um, it's located between the patient and the crystal. Then the crystal. Um, the crystal is usually sodium iodide doped with tellium crystal. And it emits faint light and uh, uh, and this uh, light is then uh, is after uh, is created after the interaction with the um, gamma ray or the positron ray, ray. And afterwards, there's a photomultiplier uh, tube, or many of them, and uh, they process the information or this interaction with the um, crystal into a viewable nuclear image or a scintigram. And this uh, newly created two-dimensional image uh, call, uh, called planar in uh, nuclear medicine, uh, medicine. And um, yeah, uh, the last part is electronics or, or especially computers that are helping us to process and evaluate the created picture. And we have to memorize that um, in nuclear medicine, the uh, radiation comes from within the patient and is opposed to the uh, conventional radiologic image where the um, nuclear uh, source is outside of the patient. Yes, here we see the gamma camera. So we have the patient, um, he has the tracer in in injected and is radiating. So then we have the uh, lead collimator followed by the crystal 
the photomotor tubules that are creating the image and the last part, the computer that is actually visualizing uh, the image that is created. Yes, this is uh, scintigraphy. So in this patient, um, it is a woman and uh, she has a relapse of uh, breast cancer and it was uh, used in a uh, tracer to uh, track down osseous metastasis, so any bone metastasis of the breast cancer. And uh, as we can see, there is no uh, remarkable part on the bones, nothing suspic suspicious, and uh, there are no located metastases in the bones yet. We have always to be careful that the bladder is often uh, deep dark on scintigraphy, but this is the natural, uh, natural in this imaging te uh, technique. Yes, so um, to the definition of uh, scintillation, so there's a simple one and it's the act of scintillating or sparkling and there's the physical one and it says a flash of light from the ionization of phosphor struck by an energetic photon or particle. But I like the simple one much more and actually it's also uh, if you see later uh, the examples you will see the sparkling and uh, it's also easy to remember that scintillating is sparkling. Um, so now we come to a, a second option of using the gamma camera to the uh, single photon emission com uh, computer tomography. So um, by rotation the gamma camera around the patient, it allows uh, us to uh, create a three-dimensional data set. So we have three um, planar uh, levels. We have the axial, coronal, and sagittal level. And it helps us to uh, find and localize easily our findings. And it's also helpful if there are overlying traces because in a three-dimensional picture, we have more point of views to evaluate the um, clinical situation. And um, we can also uh, top on this uh, SPCT uh, conventional CT. And then we don't have only the functional, but also the anatomical data. And it helps us to evaluate um, the pathology in uh, even better. But at the moment, there are not many uh, studies that support our or support this method. And there's no specific clinical use yet uh, for it. And here we see um, those uh, three planar uh, pictures. So we have the axial, the coronal, and the sagittal. And um, here we can see that there's this black dot on the right uh, thyroid gland, and it shows that there is some activity in, uh, in the right thyroid uh, gland. Yes, now we're coming to the um, positron emission tomography, also PET called, or, um, and this is often combined uh, with the CT. And um, the, how it functions, so there are some, uh, some substances that decay and create a meta-antimatter reaction. And this is then uh, um, that there are two rays that travel 180 uh, degrees apart. So for example, in fluorine 18, there is uh, uh, energy of 511 kilo electron volt. And um, by uh, a ring crystal that uh, is typical for the positron emission tomography, we can uh, capture both, uh, both 180 degree uh, rays and create thus uh, this three dimensional picture. So here we see the ring crystal and in the annihilation, 
those two beams are created and um, the ring crystal is capturing both uh, beams and is capturing us the um, localization or the origin of those two beams. Um, so the benefit of the PET CT is it has a better, better resolution that will be also see in the um, examples later than the SPECT. And um, yeah, the three-dimensional data set is also helpful to evaluate the clinical picture and give more details. It provides us again with not only a functional uh, data set, but also an anatomical and uh, has a proven higher specificity and sensitivity in detection of cancers. And um, yeah, there are also now PET MRI machines uh, on the market, but so far they're still um, testing them and there's like no beneficial or clinical role how the PET MRI can improve diagnostic me uh, measurements at the moment. So here we can see a PET CT. We see here first the gamma camera picture. Then we see the CT, the anatomical picture. And combined, we have this nice picture with the shiny and sparkling um, uh, a spot here. So in this patient, I, if I remember correctly, it was a male patient with Hodgkin lymphoma. And we can see here on the, uh, on the, in this uh, view, we see here the um, black dots on the, on the gamma camera picture. And here in the city, we can see the shining pro, uh, projection. So of course, there are some contraindications and some specific diagnostic uh, measurements we have to uh, be carefully with. So for the diagnostics, we're using those tracers and usually they are um, injected intravenously, but we can also give uh, orally tracers or even inhaled tracers if we, are, um, if we want to uh, image the, the lung function and, or use uh, tracers for the lung uh, function. And uh, yeah, tracers are usually bound to a carrier molecule for example, in, if we want to measure the reabsorption of vitamin B12, we use uh, cobalt and cobalt binds to um, vitamin B12. And then we can see how much of the vitamin is reabsorbed and uh, what happens in the body. And there's one, ex um, one tracer that doesn't need any um, carrier molecule. And this is, uh, iodine. So if we want to uh, evaluate a thyroid gland, we can use uh, radioactive iodine and it has, it has the same uh, properties and is metabolized the same way as non-radioactive iodine. So thus we don't need any carrier molecule. Yes, here we see uh, some examples, some uh, molecules that we can use as tracer. And we see also the half-life of all those tracers. So there are a few that have incredibly long half-life uh, like cobalt or um, chromium that has even many days. And the widely used um, tracer is technesium. It has a half-life of only six hours. And we can see here um, that this tracer can be used for um, many organ systems from bone system, lung, renal, thyroid lens. So this is a, a quite often used um, tracer. So there's only one con uh, absolute uh, contraindication and this is that's pregnancy. Here we have also to be careful that if we perform uh, uh, nuclear medical uh, imaging the, it depends on the tracer and 
maybe afterwards the patient should avoid contact uh, with young children until the radioactive sensitive uh, is it, it decayed so much that there is no um, potential dangerous um, radiation from the patient anymore. And this, of course, depends on the half life of the use tracer. So relative contraindications are um, breastfeeding, um, weight limits, not uh, to use the, uh, the tracer or to uh, use the scintigraphy, but it's more, more a weight limit for the tables of the instrument. So usually the weight limits um, are between 160 kilo and 220 kilo for the, um, for the CT table and the gamma camera table. And we have to be careful with a repetition of scans. We need to have a um, clever schedule plan and usually there are 24 to 48 hours between um, those scans because we don't want to exposure the patient to so much radiation. Of course, uh, claustrophobia is a, um, is a relative contraindication. If the patient can, uh, is not compliant, we can't perform this uh, action. And also hyperglycemia is a contraindication in uh, if we use fluorodexyglucose as a tracer, because we inject, uh, glucose is used as a um, carry molecule and normally the uh, blood sugar level should be 4 to 10 uh, millimole per liter and if it's higher than uh, 12.5 we should reschedule um, the appointment if we want to use this tracer. So uh, and there is uh, for bone uh, scans there are contraindications and uh, because the radiation can be used in, as mentioned in uh, tumor therapy because the radiation uh, destroys target cells. And if we have already uh, osteoclastic processes in the bone, we don't want to enhance this, fact, uh, this uh, process and thus we should avoid um, those scans. And of course, if we have healing after trauma or surgery, we should also wait until we uh, perform the scan or the bone scan on the patient. Yes, these are my sources for the first part. And uh, does anyone has questions so far? There is one in the chat. Oh, oh wait a moment. Well, um, about the benefit with the tracer, let's. It's um, mainly the benefit is that it has a specific target. For example, here in cobalt, as I mentioned before, it binds to a vitamin B12. And um, at least in here in the list, there is no other tracer that binds to vitamin B12. So every tracer has a specific use. A specific diagnostic use and um, if we want to track the vitamin b12 there's no other option than use uh, cobalt that has this immense long uh, half-life um, about the about the iliac crest i'm not sure I had also, while I was doing this presentation, I saw some scintigraphies that had apparently no findings, where I always thought that some bones looked darker than usual. I think this also comes with um, experience to evaluate those pictures. But um, yeah, I will show later in the examples, we will see also uh, more scintigraphies and there will be it, they will be clear where is the problem. So if there are any other case, uh, questions, just write in the chat or uh, tell it out loud. So for the um, case report, um, there are 
it would be nice if if you would be brave and uh, say something. So there is it's very easy. Just uh, tell me what which uh, method was used. If it was a scintigraphy, uh, SPCT or PET-CT, and uh, which organ are we targeting? And maybe if you know the purpose or uh, if you have an idea for a diagnosis. So uh, it's nothing. Uh, Nothing bad, nothing very hard, just to see if you have already a clue about a nuclear medic a medicine. And yeah, that's the first case. So any idea which uh, picture method is used here? Pet CT? Yes, exactly. Any idea what we are uh, targeting here? or which organ we are want, uh, trying to see. Maybe the breast. Yeah, that's also right. So um, here uh, the patient is 39 ye years old, it's female, and uh, it's a known cancer relapse. And now we use the PET-CT to um, image possible metastasis. And we can see metastasis in the in the sternum and also in the femur. And yeah, for example, here is also um, the kidneys are sh shining or lighted, but um, there's, that doesn't mean that there's a, a metastasis in the kidney as well. So we have always to know which organs we are um, targeting to evaluate uh, the scintigraphy. So we see we're targeting bones, and then there's most likely an, uh, no involvement of the kidney in the metastasis. And, uh, yes, the, the next one is that one. So any idea which method or which organ we are trying to see here? Probably the scrotum and it's the scintigraphy. Yes, the exactly. It's a scintigraphy of a scrotum, and we see in both uh, scrotum that uh, there was a, a testicular torsion, and it's two different cases, but it was always the left um, scrotum. So we see here, um, like a negative picture because of the torsion. There's no. Um, tracer in the left scrotum. And also here we see the slight, uh, the slight spot on the left scrotum. So this picture is, uh, is quite light. Well, I can say it's in the neck region. And I think it's a very typical example for um, nuclear medicine. So any maybe parathyroid gland or thyroid? Yes, that's uh, true. And this was also scintigraphy of the thyroid gland. And here again, we used uh, technesium ninety nine, that is pretty common. And um, we see here this um, this hotspot because it shows uh, functional activity. So it's a hotspot and not a cold spot. A cold spot would be just the uh, the mass without a functional activity, and this is a uh, adenoma in the um, thyroid gland. And we see that the rest of the glandular tissue is very light and shows no activity. So. I think the picture technique is pretty clear, but do you know which organ we are targeting? I can just get, I think in PET CT, like the brain is always very bright because it consumes more energy or do we target? But it's I think we target aorta and vasculitis. 
Yes, that's uh, both are correct that um, uh, the brain can be is often uh, enlightened and very, very uh, strongly. And what we are targeting here is uh, uh, vasculitis and we are targeting the big vessels. So we see here again, the, um, the big vessels, the aorta, the axillary vessels, and it's a large vessel vasculitis. And we can see involvement of aorta, iliac uh, arteries, ephemeral arteries, axillary and subclavian arteries in this patient. So um, this is a little tricky example. Maybe we can say what, what is the target organ? I think this is pretty clear. The intestine? Yes, exactly. And um, here we have to be carefully because uh, we used again this um, glucose uh, tracer, the FDG as a, as a tracer, but this patient uh, takes metformin and it reacts with the, uh, or um, increase the uptake. And thus due to the um, metformin, the whole uh, intestine is colored and shows function. And due to this, it's hard to evaluate if there are actually any lesion or um, or uh, malfunctioning of the uh, intestine due to this metformin. So we have also to be careful with interaction of uh, other substances that the patient might take or not take. So yeah, this makes the interpretation of the um, PET-CT quite difficult. And this is our last case. And that's these are two videos, so you have to watch carefully. The first one's the injection of the tracer. And the second one is, I think, 20 minutes after the injection. Does anyone has an idea what we are, which organ we are trying to uh, track here? Maybe again the thyroid gland. Um, good guess, but no, we are trying here to uh, evaluate the brain. And if we see here in the first video, these are the arteries, and then it comes from the um, axillary artery from the injection injection site and distributes to the brain, but um, actually it doesn't reach the brain. And this, we have the so-called light, uh, empty light, light bulb uh, sign because this is a drain, uh, brain death person. So there's no, um, there's no brain parenchyma uh, touched by the tracer. So this is the empty brain. The tracer doesn't reach the brain. What, what tracer do you uh, uh, use? Um, this is, uh, again, the uh, Technesium 99.2 in the FPCT. And yeah, we see here that there's um, the cor um, cerebral cortex, a basal ganglia, cerebellum, medulla. 20 minutes after the injection, there is no uh, uptake of the tracer. Yes. So uh, these are my sources. And please remember from this that nuclear medicine is a safe uh, method for diagnostic and treatment, um, even though it uses um, radioactive compounds, but they decay. And after the half life, there is no danger anymore for the patient. And um, the radiation source is the patient or the tracer inside the patient itself. 
and not like a conventional radiology uh, external source. And um, yeah, the in the nuclear medicine, the uh, gamma camera demonstrate the function and the metabolism, and it uh, shouldn't be used for anatomical structure evaluation. Only if we combine it together with the CT, then we can also um, evaluate the anatomical structure. Yes, that was my my presentation. Any questions? I do have one regarding the bladder and the kidneys. Could it be that it, the tracers are excreted via the kidneys and then through the urine, and that's why it shows on the scan? Yes, that is um, that is also uh, probably uh, it's part of the explanation. And one last thing for our members, maybe you can also write down your last name so I can take the attendance. That would be nice. <laughs> Any other comments or um, questions? This video will be also uploaded and I think also the presentation is shared. Uh, yeah. I have uh, I have one question about the scrotum uh, uh, you showed because it's quite an urgent situation and how long uh, does it take to uh, examine scrotum torsion with a uh, gamma camera? Um, yeah, to the duration, um, as we have seen, this whole body uh, bone scan that takes uh, up to an hour. But the smaller the area is that we evaluate, it is also already it can be done in 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Any comments from our uh, mentor? Uh, hello, <laughs> uh, I'm Anette, I'm your mentor. I'm sorry that I was a little bit late. Um, uh, just uh, thank you for the presentation. It was, I think, very nice, uh, very short and uh, <laughs> with good uh, basic points. And uh, uh, that what I wanted to say is that uh, nuclear medicine is a subspeciality uh, in residency, for example, and it's very, and, and there are very small details and nuances that uh, that I can't most likely comment because I'm not the resident of this subspeciality. Uh, but uh, it's of course it's widely used. And for example, in in Latvia, I can maybe comment about Latvia. Uh, we don't have PET CTs in our two biggest clinical hospitals, but it is widely. But we widely use uh, scintigraphy and. Uh, for most of the patients, the scintigraphy is the basic method for many organs. And uh, yeah, I think that's all from me. <laughs> I can't comment more. And uh, yes, so if you're interested in this specialty, then you have to learn a lot about it as it's a, it's a specific radiology resident. It's a res residency program for it. So yeah, I think that's that's it from me. Thank you. Okay, then I uh, want to also to emphasize that we have next month again a, a meeting with the Endocrinology uh, Society. I think it's on the 16th of June. And um, please fill out our evaluation form. You will find it in the chat. And if you don't have any questions, I hope you have a nice evening and stay safe and healthy. Thank you very thank much. You very much. It was a very good presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you too. Bye. Bye bye.